You got two kind of people that, well, multiple kind of people. Some people be discouraged by other people's success. You have people like me who's motivated by other people. Bobby, which one are you? When you see somebody that's successful, are you discouraged by them? Talk about, ah, oh, you know what? You make every excuse why you think they're successful and you downplay them. You minimize them to make yourself feel better. Or you're the type of person, you see somebody's success, you don't dog them out, you don't troll them, you start asking questions. How did you get to the next level in your life? How can I find out what those steps are? How can I find out what the clues are? Because success leaves clues. And am I willing to do the work? That's the bottom line. I know the steps. You show me the steps. I see your model. I see your industry. Am I willing to do the work? Which one are you? What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And our reaction video today is from the rapper, Yo Gotti, Memphis rapper. And uh, I got a lot of kinship to Memphis. I was stationed there when I was in the Marine Corps. I got my first tattoo by Mouses there in Millington, Tennessee. And I've got a couple business interests in there. I got some offices in there led by my friends and business partners, Edward and Jimmy Musgrove and Ruben and Sable Ote. They're in the Memphis area. So I got a lot of kinship to Memphis. And so I'm excited about this interview. My team asked me to take a look at this and Yo Gotti seems to have also taken his money from the rap world. He's looking for an exit strategy or his next move because he signs on a lot of new artists and now he's looking to invest in other things. In this case, he's got an ownership in a MLS team called DC United. So a conversation here between him and Speedy Mormon and my reaction to their conversation. Let's take a look at this. I remember and it says, you, you said, you know, I wasn't ready for that 100 mil, but now I am. Yeah. At this point, are you ready for that 100 mil? Have you crossed that mark yet? Well, right now, 100 mil ain't enough. Mm. Yeah, so. Oh. You know, it's, it's pretty evident. We did this with Kevin Hart. We did this with, uh, with Waka Flocka. Once you start seeing what you're capable of, no amount of vision, if it's true and it's real, can we ever tapped out with a dollar amount? If your vision is true by tapping the most amount of potential inside you to constantly discover the next best version of you, no dollar amount can ever buy you. If your vision is true and if your vision is clear, no vision can ever buy you into settling. Um, and that should show people how your goals can move. Because like you said, last half I said, I wasn't ready for the 100 million. Now I think the 100 million ain't the goal no more. I got business partners that got 100 billions. <laughs> Again, power of association. So in other words, Yogadi surrounded himself with the right people and oftentimes people surround themselves with people that they feel like a king around. In other words, I make more money than this guy. I make more money than this guy. The people I grew up with, I'm king and queen over them between my husband and wife. We're king and queen over everybody else than everybody we grew up with. And around them, you stay stuck in that environment. But Yo, God, he says, you know, let me surround myself with another group of people that causes me to stretch. And again, he's at the top of his current level. Now he's finding himself at the bottom of the next. And now he thinks that $100 million is no big deal. I just, you know, I got to, you know, it's one one business partner that's worth $100 billion that's involved in this. You know, so when I'm talking to these type of guys, like, directly, like I'm talking to you, that shows me that that's possible. Mm. You know that people really have it, like in real life. Mm -hmm. Like this ain't just a yep. just Movie, somebody TV, just talking. You know right. what I'm saying? So, and I'm always been one of them people who, um, you got two kind of people that well, multiple kind of people. Some people be discouraged by other people's success. And you have people like me who's motivated oh. by other people. By the way, which one are you? When you see somebody that's successful. Are you discouraged by them? Talk about, ah, oh, you know what? You make every excuse why you think they're successful and you downplay them. You minimize them to make yourself feel better. Or you're the type of person, you see somebody's success, you don't dog them out, you don't troll them, you start asking questions. How did you get to the next level in your life? How can I find out what those steps are? How can I find out what the clues are? Because success leaves clues. And am I willing to do the work? That's the bottom line. I know the steps. You show me the steps. I see your model. I see your industry. Am I willing to do the work? Which one are you? Success. So you sit me down with somebody that got a billion, 10 billion, or 100 billion. You know, I believe in seeing is believing. Once I know you was able to get it, you got two arms, two legs, and one brain just like me. Why I can't get it? Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. that's special. It's a, lot, it's a lot about sizing people up. What's the difference between them and you? Regardless if you had a college degree or not. I don't have a college degree. Some people have a college degree. I never sized myself up. Oh, you seem to be more academically smart than me. And I realized that because I don't have that academic 
breakdown in the academic success, I realize that I'm willing to outwork somebody because they might be saying, oh, I got a college degree, I got a college degree, I got position over you. Some people may think that way. And a lot of people coming to me that way. I'm saying, you know what, but I'm out to outwork you. I'm about to out-strategize you, I'm about to improve over you. And definitely, I'm about to outwork you. And the results are where they are. You said the line, I wasn't ready for that 100 million. Why was Yogati not ready? Was it a mental thing? Maybe mental you weren't thing. there yet? I, I wasn't ready for 100 million because I probably would have done the wrong thing with it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like power, could be, power could be good and bad, but you have to know how to use it. Right. Think about this real quick. The last couple of years, based on this pandemic, these lockdowns, these stringent masks mandates and vax mandates, and this thing called the universal basic income that we call stimulus packages and unemployment checks and child tax credits. And people wonder, how come the rich got richer? Because you know who's ready for it? The rich. When this money came in, this $2 trillion, this $4 trillion, think about this. In the last couple of years, the entirety of money ever printed in the history of of America, 40% of all money printed in the history of America, dating back to 1776, was printed in the last couple of years. 40%. So when rich people who had businesses versus people who did not, when this flow of money came in, who was ready for it? The business owners. Regardless if you're white, black, brown, yellow, you name it, if you had a business and you had an opportunity to capture a business that learned to adapt and adjust or found itself to be pandemic and or recession proof, you standed to make the most amount of money because money flowed through America, but where did it end up? It ended into the rich. Now, your choice from here going forward, you can be salty about it or say, you know what? Next time this thing happens, next time a recession happens, next time there's a correction in the market, next time an opportunity shows itself to pay out a lot of money, well, I be ready, or as Yogati just said, or am I still stuck in the streets? Again, the choice is yours. If you get the power and you don't know how to use it for good, you can use it for bad and it's not a good thing. Right, right, but the next yeah. benchmark is crossing that billion dollar valuation. Yeah. Okay, I have faith that you'll get there. I'll get there. For sure. Trust me. Look, look, there, look at that confidence, look at that confidence, that's swag. Get? No, I don't have doubt. I don't have doubt, no doubt. Because here's why, when by the way, I'm nowhere close to where Yo Gotti is at, but I know the universal principle is the same even at my level, at a multi-million dollar level in terms of earnings, that once you get to a level of understanding what you are capable of doing, he's experienced at his age, I'm experiencing it late in my, in my life, at my age. And some of you might experience it early in your life. Well, amen, hallelujah, whatever phase of life you're at, there are levels to this game. And what gives him confidence to say, I'm gonna be a billion dollar net worth one day. What gives him confidence is that he started to tap into his potential and he now knows what he's capable of. And the only thing, two, the only two things that's keeping him from getting to that goal is just time and effort. He's applying himself and that's what gives him confidence. He wakes up every morning, that someone have to wake him up, that alarm clock getting him up, but his own purpose, his own goals are waking him up every morning. I believe anything possible. So you're saying it's more of a matter of when it happens versus yeah, if it happens. Yeah, it's more of when it's, ha when it's gonna happen. You're so chill, it's man. Happen. I like that. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's positivity and optimism, you know, like that you really truly believe that and you can really set your intentions on that and then get after it. Yeah. No, it's possible, man. We see guys, you know, we see Jay, we see, we see guys, you know what I'm saying, puffing them. We see these guys is similar, you know what I'm saying? They from the same DNA, the same culture. We, you know what I'm saying? They, they face the same struggles. It, at some point in their life. You spoke of You see, it only takes one person in an entire family's generation or one person in a community to plant the flag in the ground, make a decision, make something of themselves, to make a big decision in your generation, to change the dynamic of that family last name, to change the dynamic of that community, that city forever. Look at what Michael Jordan did to Chicago. Look what Kobe and, uh, and Magic Johnson and Shaq did to LA. Look what all these players are doing. Look, look what Giannis is doing to Milwaukee. Look what the Green Bay Packers have done to Green Bay, Wisconsin. It only takes one person in a family generation, in a family last name, in a city, in a state, to make a decision to change. And guess what happens? Other people say, yo, they did it too. Yo, they did it too. Yeah, you want to do it too as well? Yeah, let's go do it. It takes the first one. Are you willing to be that one? You spoke about, you know, or you often speak about being a boss and being in charge. And, you know, we see Gotti and we think, 
twofold, artist but also an executive, you know, business level. And, and I'm wondering for you, is it difficult for you to be able to differentiate the two between the artist Gotti and executive It's a great Gotti? question. No. Same people. Same people, different roles, depending on what the job is today. You know? Yep. I can be this in this room, walk straight out there doing, still right into the executive role. Or go right to the studio. Walk straight on the stage and yes, right. step into your guys as an artist. <laughs> mm. This is easy. What a lot of very successful people, wealthy people have understood is that if you've got to change who you are from the boardroom to the house, around your friends, around your peers, around your investors, around your shareholders, if you've got to change who you are, you go over an amazing amount, amazing amount of stress because you've got to change who you are. So if you're the same person in and out, the character, and you're at peace with that, and you can vibe with that, and you bless other people, that, and it's obviously working, what a sweet spot to be in. You can wear the different hats is what you're saying. It's simultaneously, I actually both at the same time. I've heard that you know, you're able to kind of flow through a lot of different roles better than a lot of people may imagine because not only are you an artist yourself, but you, know, you also are an executive, and I heard you're really hands-on when it comes to your artists. You're not just Super. one of those guys who's just you know, signing artists, but you're even the last time we spoke, you told me, you know, you're even trying to help allocate where the marketing dollars go and where the I do all that. is. What? I, I do that. It's no artist. So Michael Jordan said something very profound because for 12 years, he was not the number one paid player in the NBA. I think he won some like four or five championships before he became the number one player in the NBA. Same thing too with Tom Brady. He was not the number one. He, by the way, he still is not the number one paid player in the NFL after 22 seasons. Number one paid player number one paid player in the NFL or respected with Michael Jordan in the NBA. However, what their performance is on the court, their performance is on the football field. Your guy's performance is in the studio on stage performing is his endorsement why other rappers want to sign to his label and do business with him. So oftentimes people get a twist. They sprout off into too many different business endeavors too soon. Not to say that you will not eventually do that, but based on Yo Gotti's premise of being an artist and businessman, an executive producer, an executive, is that he was able to do one thing very well, very quickly and very fast and very wealthy in terms of his experience as a rapper. And then he transitioned to other things. And oftentimes people get too confused. And I've got a video out here if you want, want to check out why multiple streams of income too soon is false. So check out my explanation here in this video. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, taking an artist to a building and flipping a coin and hoping that it lands on, the, on whatever side he is or tails that make them successful. I don't believe in that because these artists, they came to me first. So I feel like I'm responsible for what happens or don't happen in their career. And I never, I never passed it on to some people they don't even know. Right. That's right. You cannot delegate leadership. One thing I respect about Yo Gotti right from what he just said right there. If I'm recruiting you to sign to my label, I'm taking responsibility for your career. I'm responsible for my name. I'm responsible for your name. I'm responsible for everything that goes on with the business dealings of building you up based on the platform I have with my record label. And sometimes people take their businesses too casually. And that's why they built a poor reputation because people don't trust you. They don't believe that you can take them places. So if you ever wonder why people aren't attracted to you and what you're doing, ask yourself, have I done one thing very good? Have I stuck to one thing for like for an extended period that I'm not bouncing from here to here to here to here to here, that when you say something, people believe it. When you say I'm gonna be on time, you're gonna be on time. When I say I'm gonna show up for the birthday party, when you say you're gonna be at that meeting, you don't blow people off, you don't ghost people. Are you building a life where your word can be cashed? Is it the kind of mentality like, if you want something done right, you gotta do it you know, with yourself and your team. Is that what his answers to this? You're this way. I think it's a mentality. If, if you if you passionate, and there's something important with you, you should want to be involved in it. Yeah. Because don't get me twisted. Like I do believe in teamwork. So my partners and the labor that we partner with, we trust them. You know, what I'm saying we trust that they gonna put their best foot forward and do the best work. You know what I'm saying? But trusting don't mean that I'm not looking. This reminds me of a conversation I had with my mentor, Patrick, but David, he says that there's two different types of people that you end up doing business with. People that are just vendors to you. In other words, you need their service or you need their product. You need to stock your shelves with it, or you need their, 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 whatever they do for you from a service standpoint. And 
whether or not they treat you like a cherished and appreciative and important relationship, and they just say, you know what, I'm just cool just selling you this product, I'm just cool with this relationship, but I'm not going above and beyond. That, to Patrick, to telling us, is that that's a vendor. You could be eventually fired. But a partner is somebody that goes above and beyond. They respect the relationship. For example, I'm working on a book right now, and this partner of mine to pursue this book project sent me a bunch of stuff, a bunch of intellectual property that basically I could have said, you know, thank you so much for this free work. I'm going to talk to somebody else to implement the book. He could have taken that risk. But the fact that he's willing to take the risk on himself to say, you know what? I'm going to send you this table of contents. I'm going to send you this outline. You can ghost me all you like, but I'm confident on what I'm about to bring to you. So therefore, he's not a vendor to me. He's one of those guys that might potentially prove to be long-term a partner. Currently right now, he's between vendor and partner. But this project goes on, second project goes on, third project goes on, four or five, and he starts building trust, then you become a partner. So which type of people do you want to do business with? Vendors or partners? And you let those people know up front, do you just want to do business with me and collect the invoice and, and be gone and, and do the minimum to get the product or in the order? Or do you want to actually build upon this relationship, see what type of strategic relationship we can build to grow one another's business? I've heard you say this maybe once or twice, but a lot of people out there want to be a boss, but they're not even a good soldier. Yeah. What does it's that a mean? True story. What it's a true mean? story. It's, it's a myth. Like we living in a time where like we living in a generation in a time where like people okay. think it's Here we go. People think it's um it's only cool to be a boss. You know what I'm saying? And it, it that it's uncool to be an equal partner with somebody. Mm -hmm. I just think boss a four letter word. Like what does it mean <laughs> outside of the action? Yeah. If you're not doing boss, why you wanna be a boss? boss? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't really a boss. You just, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you want to seem cool. That's the difference between me. I put it all on the line for somebody else, though. You know what I'm saying? If you the one, I put everything on you. So what the old guy is talking about is, are you trickling with success or are you going all in with success to be a boss? And sometimes people don't learn that at the boss level. You learn that at the soldier level. I remember when I was in the United States Marine Corps, and we had different drills, we had different executes, we had different missions, we had different sorties, we had different things that we had to do. And we can tell very easily when the bullets start flying and the loud noises start coming your way and you are in the trenches, you are in the areas of being very, very uncomfortable, who shows up to be a boss? Because just because you got boss written on your chest or you got rank on your collar, because you got rank on your sleeve, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what your rank is. Doesn't matter if you call yourself a boss. If you are a boss, then you're willing to lead by example. You're willing to go all in. Not just say, you know what, I'm just stick behind a computer and say I'm a boss or go print on Vistaprint that I'm a CEO, that I'm a founder, and this and that actually doing the work. And big reason why for a large part of my career, I've loved being a soldier. I love being able to be a guy that says, listen, if I listen to the coaches, mentors, and strategists around me, I just go out there and get at it, then I can earn my stripes to become a boss myself. And then by the time I do boss things, I was already doing these things at a different level. Now I can continue to expand, I continue to grow, and I can expect the same thing from other people because I did it at the lowest level. Oftentimes people talk about leadership all the time, but they don't talk about followership. If you wanna be a good leader one day, you gotta learn how to become a good follower. If you wanna be a captain one day, you gotta learn how to protect the team even before you are a captain. So what are you, I mean, not to put words in your mouth, but are you saying like you're willing to risk it all for success, like whatever it takes? Like, I risk it all for the team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and when I say that. I love, I love this positioning. So when I was broke, it was because it was about me. And nobody's willing to help me. But the moment I shifted focus and I made it about other people, it made it about we instead of me, guess what? Not only was my business immensely blessed, but also much more people wanted to help me and much more people sending me gifts. It's so weird when you're broke and it's about you, 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 nobody wants to help you. But when you made it about we, 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 a lot of people want to help you and then send gifts your way. And the fact that he's realizing in, in another industry just tells you there are such things called universal principles that doesn't matter if you're a pastor, doesn't matter if you're a ball player, doesn't mean if you're a rapper, doesn't matter if you're a real estate agent, insurance agent, doesn't matter if you're a doctor, or dentist. These are universal principles that work in many different areas throughout life. I say that meaning like, you know, the time factors, the, the money, the investment, everything. Like, I'm not holding back nothing for, for this how I move as a label. Like, you know, if it come down to Money Bag Yo or ESTG, 42 Dub, Black Youngs, whoever, you know, we putting it, like, we not doing those shortcuts. 
We're not doing no shortcuts, and we're not allowing the labor to do shortcuts. So when you say that... If there's one shortcut to success, it's called doing it right the first time. And sometimes people get jaded with these titles, like 15 hacks here, 15 different shortcuts here. That's not all good, but it's one thing that you cannot cheat, man, and it's called process. You know, people want to be a boss but aren't even a good soldier. Help, help the people out there understand and digest that. Do you even know what being a good soldier is? Great question. Some people, again, they, they offended by the idea of being a soldier, mm -hmm. not me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can step into soldier role and back into boss role at any moment. You know what I'm saying? If I go to a money bag yo show, I may be playing security. This reminds me a lot of times, especially my industry in the, in the insurance industry, oftentimes two people too soon try to break off and run their own business by themselves. They have zero clue how to not only to be a CEO, they have zero clue how to be a boss. They have zero clue how to be a businessman. You know why? Because they weren't a good insurance agent to begin with. They didn't know the grind. They were trying to shortcut the process because they want to be boss title, boss title, boss title, but didn't realize, man, in order to have that type of title, you have to be a very good producing agent, have a body of work that people can look back and say, you know, man, why should I listen to you? Why should I listen to you? Why should I listen to you? Oh, you did that. Oh, you did this for them. Oh, you helped out with this project. Oh, snap. You have a lot more headway than I do. Maybe I should listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he on stage, I'm looking out. I'm looking around. I'm trying to make sure... You know what I mean? It's or I'm, I'm listening to the sound, like, yo, his mic bleeding back. You may see me run off the stage, run to the front of the house, like, yo, get his shit together. I'm a soldier at that point. Right. I ain't sitting in the back like I almost some big C. It's, it's attention to detail, especially when you're not getting paid to do it. What are you willing to do without getting paid for? And then when you start getting paid for it, there's three, I found there's three phases. Phase number one, whatever you're doing, you're gonna be grossly underpaid. Phase number two, when you continue to do what you continue to do, now you establish a reputation. Now you're starting to get paid what you're worth. And guess what happens when you get paid what you're worth? You're gonna start attracting people that want to work together with you. Because why? Because you establish yourself as a soldier. Next thing you know, you establish yourself as a business owner, in this case, an executive. And now you're attracting a team, you're attracting people to come with you. Now, instead of being grossly underpaid, now instead of getting paid what you're worth, now you are grossly overpaid. But are you willing to go through these three stages? So what Yo God is talking about here reminds me of a proverb in the Bible in terms of reputation, and it reads like this. A good name is to be chosen over great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. So what do you want? You want rubies and gold, but zero reputation? Because what happens when you have rubies and gold and wealth and success, it's only short-lived. But when you build a reputation, opportunities, phone calls, partnerships, endorsements will come your way if you have a reputation. So being, being knowing how to step in and out of their role. And if we in a, if we in a staff meeting, you know, I'm in up putting the pressure on the team to make sure he got the right marketing and the right budgets and the right everything he needs. So I'm able to step in and out of roles without being offended. Mm -hmm. When you run in a company, you had hundreds and thousands of employees come and go. Like I have seen people who, because of their title, think they can't do certain things. Ah. Some things too little for them to do. It's nothing too little for me to do. Zero, zero. And there's another proverb I'm reminded of as he's talking about this, because sometimes people worry about title, they worry about class, but King Solomon in the Proverbs, he talks about, consider the ant. What? The ant. So check out the ant. There is no king, there's only queen that they serve. And here's what the ant does in the book of Proverbs. In a good book, it reads like this. Go to the ant, you slacker. Observe its ways and become wise. Without leader, administrator, or ruler, it prepares its provisions in summer. It gathers its food during harvest. How long will you stay in bed, you slacker? When will you get up from your sleep? See, he's not worried about the title. The fact is the job needs to get done. Kudos to Yogadi. It's nothing too little, it's nothing too big. So a lot of people though, if put in that position, hey, I've worked my way up the ladder, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've earned my way to be here. I've signed you as an artist. If they were Yo Gotti, they would be offended by the idea of having to be a soldier. Yeah, but that's why they ain't Yo Gotti. That's right, that's why they're not him. That's why. That's what everybody else would want to do. Don't be like everybody else. You probably ever see one Jay-Z in a lifetime. That's why you only see one of these type of people because we different. And we don't expect, we don't, we don't expect everybody to be a Jay-Z. 
we don't expect everybody to be a yo guy. Yep, the work is plenty, but the workers are few. Mm. I, I learned how to be a good soldier before I even got into the music business. Mm. I learned how to play my part, you know what I'm saying, and, and, how, to, and how to help the team win. Yeah, and so maybe then it's like when you are a good soldier, what you learn as a good soldier will then help you when you get to that next level or when you do become a boss. Yeah, to identify other good soldiers. Right? Oh, what a great point there. You know, and guys that'll never be one. Damn, that's... So here's the thing. Performers like talking to performers. Non-performers like talking to non-performers. If you're a non-performer, you want to be a soldier, guess, and you want to be a boss one day, guess who you should be talking to? Should you be talking to other non-performers? No. Is a non-performer, if you want to be a soldier one day, if you want to be a boss one day, as a non-performer who doesn't really have a body of success yet, a reputation to build yet, well, guess what you need to do? You need to be uncomfortable enough to talk to a performer. And here's another thing too as well. People that excel love to talk to people that excel. They love to compete. People that love to complain and gossip, guess who they love to talk to? Other people that love to complain and gossip and build their life and business from that too as well. It's called the pity party. And for the rest of the life, they're going to be in a pity party where the rest of the winners become soldiers and bosses. So I love what you guys mentioned here and talked about here in this interview. And it reminds me of what the country has gone through the last couple of years. As I mentioned before, this whole stimulus plan, this universal basic income came to a lot of people in the form of stimulus checks and unemployment checks and child tax credits, et cetera, et cetera. Not having to pay your rent, not having to pay your student loans, all those different things. But the reality is this, many people had a choice to either work or not work based on what they were gonna get from the government. And right now, what the country is feeling, there's a lack of people wanting to work. There's a lack of people wanting to get after. My own kids said, so listen, how come you guys don't take the unemployment check? My older, my older adult kids, I have a 26 year old son and twin girls that are now 21. Why didn't you take the unemployment check like everybody else did? Sit down, Poppy. I got pride. We are a Sapala. We work for our money. I don't want to be dependent on anybody else. And by the way, their friends were trying to talk to them and talk them into taking these unemployment checks because they were just hanging out at home and playing video games and whatever the case may be. But they wanted to have an ability to prove themselves and build a reputation that they wanted to be known throughout the pandemic, throughout the lockdown, that no matter what happened, they worked for their money. So as you build your reputation, and by the way, the, just wanna let you guys know, no judgment here. A lot of people made a wrong decision, so what? So here going forward, ask yourself, what type of reputation do you wanna build? If you wanna be a boss, great. Before that, you wanna become a leader, right? Before that, what do you gotta do? You gotta be a soldier, you gotta be a follower, be able to execute the little tasks. So therefore, when the big tasks come, the big paycheck comes, the fame and the fortune comes, then you know how to handle it. So with that being said, guys, please post your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback down in the comment section below. What would you add to this conversation here with Yo Gotti? So before I let you go, please check out these other videos right here. This has been getting a lot of attention to how people in the celebrity world are talking about money, finance, and financial literacy and entrepreneurship. So if you feel that this video has provided some value to you, please consider hitting like. If you watched a couple of our videos yet and you still haven't done so, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.